Directors Board, but she's also with uh, Lupe Fund, a, part, a partner organization. Yvette, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, thank you, Jesse. Yvette Mosquera. Um, I've been on the League of Women Voters for just over a year, and I love it. And um, I've been part of the Lupe Fund Board for a long time, I think more than 10 years. So, um, bienvenidos a todos. Eh, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Voy a hacer lo mejor posible para traducir todo lo que dice Jesse. Um, es un poquito complicado porque hay muchas eh, palabras técnicas, ¿no? Que es difícil de traducir, pero, pero voy a hacer lo mejor que pueda. Thank you. Okay, so New Jersey has three statewide public questions on the ballot, and you might also have some local questions on your ballot as well. We're going to focus today just on the statewide public questions. I'll give you a second of that. Vamos a traducir, vamos a hablar sobre las eh, preguntas eh, del Estado, preguntas estatales públicas que hay en las papeletas de votación. Public questions, they're also called ballot questions. We'll use those terms interchangeably. I'm not sure if there's a Spanish equivalents for those two terms or if it's just one. Um, they ask voters to vote yes or no. Um, so you have an option to vote yes or no on each of these questions. And we'll talk about what a yes vote or a no vote means. Las preguntas estatales, uh, también conocidas como preguntas electorales, um, son eh, del estado de New Jersey y pueden ustedes votar sí o no y están localizadas en la parte de atrás de su papeleta de votación. So the statewide ballot questions that there is are constitutional amendments, changes or additions to the New Jersey state constitution. Um, they're put on the ballot by the legislature and uh, for many folks, this is really important. The uh, ballot questions are on the back of the ballot, so be sure to turn your ballots over. Um, no se olviden que las preguntas están en la parte de atrás de su papeleta de votación. Eh, las preguntas de um, estatales son enmiendas constitucionales, cambios o adiciones a la constitu constitución del estado de New Jersey. Son propuestas, eh, son puestas en, en los boletos electorales por la legislatura. Eh, pero no se olviden que hay mucha gente que tal vez no se da cuenta que están en la parte de atrás. So here's a, an example of what you might expect to see. This is the sample ballot from Rockaway in Morris County, New Jersey. But every, every ballot looks different. Um, but this is just one example. And at the bottom, you'll see it says public questions are on the back, both vote back sides. So your ballot should have some something similar. Este es un ejemplo de, de una papeleta de votación. Esta es la del de condado de Morris, pero el suyo puede ser un poquito diferente, puede ser casi igual, pero es un buen ejemplo de cómo se ve la papeleta de votación. Cada boleto tiene un aspecto un poquito diferente, pero puede ser casi igual en la parte inferior del, del boleto que indica las preguntas o si no, atrás, en la parte de atrás están las tres preguntas que vamos a hablar hoy día. And this is the back of that ballot with the public questions. Um, so this also looks different for, for everyone. In this example, it appears in um, um, English and Spanish, depending on your language requirements in your county, it will be different. Um, so for example, my ballot in Monmouth County, the public questions uh, for my particular town were only listed as the headings with for each constitutional amendment without listing the questions at all, there was an insert in, um, included with the ballot. So everybody might see something different. Esta es la parte posterior de la papeleta de votación con las preguntas para el público. Esto también se ve diferente para todos. Por ejemplo, el boleto de Jesse en el condado de Monmouth eh, solo enumeró los títulos de cada enmienda constitucional. Eh, las preguntas fueron eh, puestas en otro pedazo de papel eh, y fueron interpretadas en español. Puede ser que en diferentes condados tengan otros idiomas, pero la mayoría, todos, casi todos tienen la pregunta en español. So before I jump into the questions, I uh, just want to let everybody know that the analyses that we're going to talk about are available on our website. I'll give the link to Jeff 
with the slides. Um, they're available in both English and Spanish. So we have these analyses available for everyone in, in English and Spanish. Todo lo que vamos a hablar hoy día está en el sitio de web de, de la Liga de, de Mujeres Votantes, League of Women Voters of New Jersey, lwnj.org, y va a estar en inglés y en español. Todo lo que vamos a hablar hoy día. Ok. So, on to the questions. The first statewide public question on your ballot is a constitutional amendment to legal, legalize marijuana. Um, a couple of uh, points about this, some general understanding. Um, that we're talking about adult personal use marijuana. It would be legal for folks 21 and older. And the state commission, the Cannabis Regulatory Commission, which uh, currently regulates the medical marijuana program, would oversee the new personal use market. Ok, la primera pregunta es una enmienda, enmienda constitucional para legalizar la marihuana. Eh, este, uh, esta enmienda es para las personas adultas de 21 años y más y es eh, reconocido por la, la Comisión Reguladora de Cannabis eh, Supervisaria. Um, y lo que va a hacer es que no especifica exactamente cómo van a legalizar eh, la marihuana, pero um, tienen que pasar esta enmienda para poder regular e implementar eh, esta nueva ley. Um, so important to understand about the ballot question, it does not specify how legalization will be put into practice. A legislation is going to be needed to, um, imp for implementation and regula regulation prior to this going to effect. Um, sí, como mencioné antes, eh, esto no especifica exactamente cómo van a legalizar la marihuana, pero necesitan esto para poder uh, implementar y regular la ley. And there will be state sales tax collected. Local municipalities can also uh, charge an additional tax on, on uh, the sale of, of adult use marijuana. And we included for additional um, research, just one coalition group that is recommending a yes vote, uh, NJ Ken 2020. And then uh, to balance it, a, a coalition that is recommending a no vote, don't let NJ go to pot. And you can uh, visit these links when Jeff sends this out for more, for more info. Um, si es que se hace uh, legal esta enmienda, um, esta ley, van a colectar impuestos estatales. La, los municipios locales, las ciudades, Uh, también podrán colectar sus impuestos sobre la, las ventas de marihuana. Hay dos posiciones. Hay uno a favor, que es la... Eh, el, la nosotros pusimos más eh, investigaciones e información en el website para que usted lea y vea si es que le conviene um, el voto sí. Y ese, esa organización se llama NJ Can 2020 y ahí está el el website, el sitio de web, y si es que usted quiere leer que por qué eh, no sería bueno votar, votar el no por el número uno, entonces puede ir a la otra organización que se llama Don't Let Go, Don't Let NJ Go to Pop, y ahí están eh, las dos um, propuestas, eh, por qué podría usted votar por sí y por qué podría usted, usted votar por no, para que se informe. Um, so We, we do not have a position on this question, but we'll try to present some equal arguments on why folks might want to vote yes or why folks might want to vote no. Um, so a no vote means that you do not want to legalize uh, marijuana in New Jersey. Um, so a couple of reasons for this, I'll say maybe just one and then I'll let Eva uh, translate is that um, So some of the increased sales tax revenue may be needed to pay for the, the implementation and regulation of the system rather than being added to the general fund. Ok, entonces nosotros vamos a hablar ahora sobre por qué usted tal vez quiera votar el no por la número uno. Um, una razón es porque van a subir los impuestos 
y va, que sería necesario para implementar y regular um, esta, eh, en la venta de marihuana. Okay, en vez de eh, subir los impuestos y ponerlo en un fondo general, en, se, se usarían los impuestos para regular la marihuana. Um, so another reason, legalization may result in increased use in communities, potentially leading to traffic accidents, cases of overuse or abuse, and unintended access by young people. Otra razón sería um, por el no sería que tal vez uh, la comunidad pueda empezar a, a tener un poco más de accidentes de tráfico. Um, puede ser que haya abuso um, y puede ser que uh, mucha gente joven empiece a usarlo y no sean, um, eh, sería, tendría mucho acceso. We don't have uh, technology like alcohol, breathalyzers, um, in order to be able to um, figure out mar marijuana use by, by drivers. Ahora en este momento no tenemos ninguna tecnología como la que se usa para detectar el nivel de alcohol. No tenemos eso para la marihuana. Um, and then the underground market will still exist. Um, it may be cheaper to buy on the black market without regulations or sales tax. Eh, en adición, eh, la marihuana igual estuviera uh, disponible en el mercado negro, en el, o sea, a escondidas, eh, y puede ser que sea más barato comprarlo de una persona que no sea un vendedor legal, que no tiene regulación y no se pagaría impuestos. And then finally, that cannabis is still illegal at the federal level. Y al final, eh, a nivel federal, uh, marihuana, el cannabis todavía es ilegal. Um, and then, Yvette, a, a little off script, just to clarify, the league takes positions on ballot questions where we have an existing policy position to do so. We just don't have a policy position regarding marijuana use, so we didn't have a, a way that we could take, take a position on this particular question. Normalmente eh, la Liga de Mujeres Votantes eh, tiene posiciones, se, se pone a favor o en contra de algunas pólizas, pero como no tenemos ninguna póliza sobre la marihuana, no tenemos ninguna eh, póliza, ni, ni a, no estamos ni a favor ni en contra de esta enmienda. If I could just jump in for one second, uh, sorry, uh, just, to, uh, just to share Um, NASW New Jersey does actually have a stance uh, on this ballot question. Uh, we have been supporting uh, the legalization of uh, recreational marijuana uh, for some time now, and uh, I could probably digress into a whole other webinar about reasons for mm -hmm. this, uh, which we won't have time to do today, but I did just want to put out there that NASW has been supporting legalization Uh, probably for many of the reasons Jesse's going to illuminate shortly. Uh, and if anybody has questions about that, you're welcome to reach out to us on our chapter directly. Uh, yeah. Jess dice que si alguien tiene alguna pregunta, eh, la Asociación Nacional de Trabajadores Sociales, um, ellos en cambio sí apoyan la legalización de marihuana. And si quieren, si tienen alguna pregunta eh, y saber por qué, ahora mismo vamos a hablar del por qué tal vez usted quiera votar el sí. Eh, pero si tienen más preguntas, pueden llamarle a Jeff en la Asociación Nacional de, de Trabajadores Sociales. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that, Jeff. I think it's important. Um, I tried to just give the coalition groups, and I hope folks will look at who's on, on what side of, of this issue. It's important. Um, I do wish that the league could have gotten involved in this particular issue, but we, we just didn't have the ability to. Um, so some reasons why voters might want to vote yes. So meaning that they, if you vote yes, it means you do want to see marijuana legalized in New Jersey. I'm going to start with the last one first, Eva. Um, okay. Because I do want to stress here from what Jeff said, the NJ Can 2020, Uh, really sees this as a uh, racial justice issue, which might be uh, something that NASW also is stressing, right, yes. Jeff? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so um, I think that that's important to understand that the, 
you know, the, one of the reasons folks are, are in support is because legalizing cannabis will reduce low level possession arrests, um, which there are significant racial disparities in. So I, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I should, should have pulled them up, but there is a significant, significantly more arrests for uh, people of color, I think particularly black people um, regarding low level possession arrest for, for cannabis. Um, una razón por la cual uh, organizaciones como la NASW y NJCAN apoyan el, la, leg la legalización de marihuana es porque hay mucho, mucha discriminación racial cuando tiene que ver con los arrestos sobre la marihuana. Um, por ejemplo, dicen que no tenemos los números en este momento, pero... Um, cuando una persona está, tiene posesión de marihuana y le arrestan, les arrestan por más tiempo y arrestan más personas de color, más, más uh, eh, afroamericanos y más latinos um, que cualquier otra persona. Entonces, esa es una de las razones que, queremos, que quieren legalizar. Um, another reason to support vote oh, yes is that legalization will allow uh, economic development jobs, increased sales tax revenue, and um, as we mentioned, local municipalities could tax as well, so it could generate local tax revenue. Otra razón por eh, votar el sí sería que eh, ayudaría a la economía, daría más trabajos, crean, crean más trabajos, eh, y se colectan más impuestos. Se colectan más impuestos para la ciudad como para el estado también. Um, ending prohibition <clears throat> may related to the policing may lead to reduced costs of policing, arresting, prosecuting, and punishing people for cannabis related offenses. Si usted vota por sí, puede ser que eh, se reduzca los costos de las, los policías, de los costos de los arrestos, de uh, los procuradores, de meter a las personas a la cárcel um, por tener um, cannabis encima de ellos. Eh, todo eso cuesta dinero. Entonces, esto puede reducir estos costos. Um, and training law enforcement to recognize drug effects has been, been found effective in identifying those driving under the influence. El entrenamiento para los policías um, también uh, a que reconozcan los efectos de las drogas ha sido efectivo en identificar uh, las personas que manejan bajo la influencia. Regulation will allow for quality control and best practices, better ensuring a safer product than an unregulated market. Eh, también, si usted vota el sí, eh, pueden regular este producto, la marihuana, y puede tener mejor calidad y sería un producto más seguro um, a lo opuesto de cuando no es regulado. Is there anything else you want to just add on that, Jeff, before we move on or? Yeah, um, one thing to add, uh, I, I would say as NASW has been supporting this legislation uh, and effort to move forward with uh, the legalization of cannabis, thing we have been consistently advocating for that is not, uh, has not appeared in the legislation that's been drafted yet is uh, the recognition that like with legal alcohol, there are certain people who uh, use legalized cannabis that will have problems that may become addicted. And so one of the things that we've been advocating for is to uh, include that a certain portion of revenues related to uh, legalized cannabis are dedicated to funding uh, alcohol and substance abuse treatment and mental health treatments, uh, just to make sure that there's an expansion of availability for those services uh, for people who need them. Eh, Jeff dice que la Asociación de Trabajadores Sociales ha estado abogando para que den más fondos para el tratamiento en caso de que las personas, así como hay um, adictos al alcohol, puede ser que haya adicción a la marihuana y ellos quieren promover más eh, legislación y más fondos para ayudar a las personas que tienen uh, adicciones. To Jeff's point, just remember that there, there will be... Um, if passed, there will be a legislation that will be needed um, and to uh, talk about regulation and implementation of this. So there's still additional 
opportunities for advocacy uh, past election day on this particular ballot question. Thanks, Jessica. Después, Después de las votaciones, va a haber oportunidades para más um, información y más um, abogacía porque van a tener que tener um, eh, reuniones públicas para regular eh, esta ley. Okay. So the second ballot question is regarding property tax deductions and exemptions for peacetime veterans. Um, so currently, honor, honorably discharged veterans um, of 14 identified wars, conflicts, or peacekeeping missions who are legal residents of MJ and own property um, are eligible to receive a $250 property tax deduction. Surviving spouses um, of those who died on active duty can also claim that deduction. Um, la pregunta número dos es la deducción de exención del impuesto a la propiedad para veteranos en tiempos de paz. Esta, esta enmienda concedería una deducción del impuesto a la propiedad de $250 a los veteranos que no prestaron servicio en tiempo de guerra. El viudo o viuda de un veterano que no se prestó servicio en tiempo de guerra recibiría esta deducción después de la muerte del veterano. Um, so if, if approved, this constitutional amendment uh, will extend that property tax deduction to veterans that did not serve in time of war, um, and their surviving spouses would also receive that deduction after the veteran's death. Si es que es aprobado esta enmienda, daría eh, la deducción a los veteranos que no estuvieron en, que no sirvieron en ninguna guerra y a los esposos o las esposas del veterano uh, también recibiría eh, este, el, los 250 dólares después de que se, uh, cuando sean viudos o viudas. In addition, the question will extend the 100% the 100 property tax deduction that's currently available for veterans disabled in the line of duty, um, even if they're not, uh, even if they're not um, disabled during a conflict or a peacekeeping mission. Uh, también da el 100% de um, deducción de impuestos de la propiedad a los veteranos que han sido, que son deshabilitados um, durante su servicio, um, así hayan estado o no hayan estado en ninguna guerra, si es que son deshabilitados durante su servicio, recibirían el 100% de deducciones de impuestos eh, de su propiedad. Um, we did not take, uh, the League of Women Voters uh, did not take a position on this question either. I don't know, <clears throat> Jeff, if you, if you took a position. Uh, we did not take a formal position on this ballot question. <laughs> Ninguna de las dos organizaciones, ni la, eh, la Asociación de Trabajadores Sociales, ni la Liga de uh, Mujeres Votantes, tiene posición, no está ni a favor ni en contra de esta uh, enmienda. And uh, Yvette, Lupe, did you take a position on one or two? Okay. So. No, uh, Lupe funded not. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so arguments to vote no for question one. We actually only have one argument pro and con for each of these. So a, a no would mean that you do not want to extend uh, the property tax deductions to veterans that did not serve during a time of war. So you'd be keeping the system the way it is. Si usted vota el no, um, tal vez votaría no porque no quiere que los impuestos del veterano que no estuvo en guerra, que no sirvió durante ninguna guerra, pues, tal vez no quieren que le den el 100% de um, deducciones de los impuestos de su propiedad. So uh, a reason a voter might decide to vote no is because extending this property tax deduction will increase expenditures <clears throat> from the property tax relief fund, uh, fiscal estimates, <clears throat> excuse me, provided by the New Jersey Office of Legislative Services, state that this would cost the state 13.6 million from the fund in fiscal year 2020. Tal vez eh, si vota que no es um, porque si usted le da um, esta um, deducción de los impuestos de la propiedad, um, subirían los costos del uh, fondo de alivio de la propiedad del Estado. Eh, están estimando que 
en la, eh, en la oficina de legisladura, el Estado le costaría 13.6 millones de dólares eh, de este fondo para el año fiscal 2020. So, um, a yes vote means that, that vote that you do want to extend property tax deductions to veterans that did not serve during a time of war. And the reason uh, that you might want to vote yes is that the reasons for, for providing the ta property tax relief um, as recognition of service rendered to our country should extend to veterans who served our nation regardless of the state of conflict. Eh, si usted quisiera votar el sí, una razón sería porque usted quiere que le den um, alivio de los impuestos de su propiedad, eh, deducciones 100%, para reconocer a los veteranos que han servido a nuestro país, así hayan o no hayan estado en un conflicto, eh, en alguna guerra, eh, ustedes quieren apoyarles a los veteranos. So the third question, I think perhaps is the most complicated question on, on the ballot. And to be completely transparent before we dive in, the League of Women Voters of New Jersey, NASW and Lupe Fund, uh, as well as a Lupe PAC, which is a separate organization, um, have all uh, taken a position against this particular ballot question, urging voters to vote no. However, I'm still going to present some pros and cons um, as, as balanced as possible, and then give some additional information about why, why we, we took that position briefly. Um, Jeff or Yvette, did you want to say anything or is that? Um, no, I'll translate um, now. Um, okay. Vamos a ser eh, honestos con ustedes, sinceros con ustedes. Las tres organizaciones que está aquí, uh, eh, Lupe, la Asociación de Trabajadores Sociales y la Liga de Mujeres Votantes, todas está, todos estamos promocionando el no para la pregunta número tres, pero vamos a dar las dos, uh, los dos puntos de vista, el sí y el no, pero nosotros estamos abogando por el no. Yeah, I, I would just add that, um, you know, this question Uh, it's at the end, it's question number three, it's the most complicated, but it also has the potential to have the most significant impact on our state uh, of any of the three questions. And so uh, I, I think, you know, it's really important that we can present uh, the arguments for and as well as against uh, to let people decide, obviously, uh, but it's, it's really a crucial question. Dice que esta um, pregunta es una que es muy complicada, pero es tal vez la más importante de las tres. Es por eso que nosotros eh, vamos a dar más información. Okay, so question three asks is about a, a constitutional amendment to change the legislative redistricting schedule if the census data is delayed. So this question asks voters if they approve delaying the certification of a new legislative map if the census uh, data is received after February 15th of the year ending in one, so that would be 2021. Uh, this delay would mean that New Jersey's apportionment commission, the apportionment commission are the folks who draw the legislative maps, would have until March 1st of a year ending in two, in this case, 2022, to create new legislative districts and state legislative elections would be held under that new map in years ending in three, so this would mean 2023. Eh, la pregunta número tres es la enmienda constitucional para cambiar el cronograma legislativo de delimitación de distritos si se demoran los datos del censo. O sea, esta pregunta les pregunta a ustedes, los votantes, si ustedes eh, aprobarían eh, tardar la certificación de los cronogramas legislativos um, si es que los datos del censo se recibe después del 15 de febrero del año que termina en el 1, como por ejemplo el 2021. Esto quiere, quiere decir que la comisión tendría hasta marzo de ese año, del año eh, siguiente, que sería el 2022, para crear uh, nuevos cronogramas eh, legislativos, nuevos distritos legislativos en el estado. Eh, y sería, resultaría en un nuevo mapa 
en el tercer año, que sería empezando en el 2023. So in, in short, uh, it, it delays the implementation of a new legislative map by two years anytime the census data is received after February 15th. O sea, en corto, eh, para ser más simple, eh, se demoraría la implementación de la, del cronograma legislativo por dos años. Se demora dos años más si es que se recibe los datos del censo después del 15 de febrero. The question was proposed to address a possible but unknown delay of federal census data um, as a result of COVID-19. So typically, as a courtesy, New Jersey and Virginia receive census data earlier than other states because we hold off year legislative elections. We have elections in 2021. So we required the data for legislative elections held in 2021. While we often receive, receive the data by February 15th, the Census Bureau is not required to provide that data until April 1st. Um, and we have received the data past the February 15th deadline in the past. That, this happened in 2001. Um, la pregunta es eh, supuestamente para, um, para no tardar el, eh, las mapas de legislación si es que se recibe el, los datos del censo tarde, o sea, básicamente lo pusieron por el, la pandemia, ¿no? Normalmente New Jersey y Virginia recibe sus datos del censo antes um, de esa fecha, pero porque nosotros tenemos um, elecciones en años que no son el mismo año de la presidencia, o sea, por ejemplo, tenemos elecciones en el 2021. Um, casi siempre recibimos los datos hasta el 15 de febrero, pero el censo no está um, requerido, no, no es un, um, no, no, se, pueden ellos mandarnos los datos hasta abril. Entonces, eh, ha habido en el 2001, eh, New Jersey recibió sus datos después del 15 de febrero. Es muy raro, pero sí, lo, sí ha pasado en el 2001. So some arguments that voters might want to vote no. And a no vote on this means that you do not want to delay the redistricting process in this specific way every time census data is received after February 15th. Is that um, New Jersey's population is as much more racially diverse than it was 10 years ago. Uh, so we would be using the map that we drew from the 2010 census for an additional two years. So that's what we're talking about 10 years ago. Yvette, I'm sorry, I didn't write that, that down there. Um, but New Jersey's Latinx and Asian populations have grown by 20% since 2010. And extending the current district lines for two years means that these populations will not be accurately reflected or politically represented for an additional two years. I don't know why the question was there. Ok, um, un argumento por la cual ustedes quisieran votar que no es porque si es que no hacemos um, nuevos mapas o se demoran más tiempo, en los últimos 10 años el, la población latina y asiática ha crecido por más, de, más o menos 20% o más desde el 2010. O sea, la última vez que hicieron estos mapas fue en el 2010. Y desde ahí ha habido un, un, uh, un cambio grande en el, la población asiática y latina. Entonces, si se um, continuamos con el mismo mapa por dos años más, eso quiere decir que nuestras poblaciones no van a ser representadas en los próximos dos años. Okay. So, um, th there are... And I, I would say for some of these were other solutions. So some of these solutions are, are still on the table and some I think have passed, but there are other solutions, uh, including changing the primary election date in 2021, which is still a viable solution, uh, switching from odd to even election years or using the existing map for just one year. Hay otras soluciones. Um, se puede cambiar eh, las elecciones primarias eh, en el 2021 para que no sean en años um, 
eh, ¿cómo se dice? Años pares, sino impares um, y que eh, se pudiera usar el mapa que tenemos ahora por solo un año en vez de dos años. Um, and the, uh, another reason that voters uh, might want to vote no is that this is a permanent change. So every time New Jersey receives the census data past February 15th, the existing districts will remain into effect for another two years. Um, this would limit the flexibility in handling delays for future census counts not, not affected by, by a pandemic. Uh, otra razón por la cual usted tal vez quiere votar que no es porque este cambio es permanente. O sea que cada vez que New Jersey recibe los datos del censo um, después del 15 de febrero, los distritos eh, se quedan iguales por dos años más. Y eso nos limita la flexibilidad y um, para, para los censos futuros que no sería afectado por la pandemia. So, um, a yes vote uh, would mean that you, you do want to re delay redistricting using the timeline that we discussed uh, that was specified in this amendment when, when the, ever the census data is received after February 15th. So, uh, the first reason that you might, a voter might want to vote yes is that the March 1st, 2022nd certification of new legislative district lines give more time for redistricting for the redistricting process and determining a new legislative map. Una razón por la cual usted tal vez um, quiera votar el sí es porque quiere que se demore más tiempo en hacer nuevos mapas um, legislativos. En marzo 2022, la certificación de la legislación les da más tiempo para, um, para los, cambiar el cronograma. Um, y hacer un nuevo mapa. Um, uh, another reason is that the proposed delay uh, avoids compressing primary timelines, primary election timelines, providing a normal time frame for new districts, um, a normal time frame after new districts are certified to field and run candidates in 2023. Um, otra razón sería porque eh, la, esta demora um, no deja que las primarias eh, sean más, um, más cortas. Um, daría el tiempo normal uh, para que los nuevos distritos sean certificados um, y para los candidatos para el 2023. Uh, this option uh, presented in this, in this proposal prevents uh, possible multiple one-year terms and elections. So specifically, we're talking about the possibility of a special election in 2022 if the census data is delayed. Eh, esta opción también previene um, múltiples términos de un año para las elecciones. Um, por ejemplo, en una elección en el 2021, bajo el mapa viejo, si es que se demora los datos del censo, Um, sería um, seguido por una elección especial en el 2022 um, y después otra elección en el 2023. Okay, so uh, when we examine the pros and cons of this question, uh, the League of Women Voters of New Jersey, along with uh, the Fair Districts New Jersey Coalition, which is a um, project of the League, Uh, decided to recommend a no vote on this particular question. Um, we, we did so because we do not believe that a permanent solution for a one-time problem is the right answer to delayed census results. And we do not want to dilute the political power of New Jersey's diverse communities. Um, we, we mentioned the, the growth of Latinx and Asian populations specifically um, has been 20%, but New Jersey's population growth in general has changed quite quite a lot since 2010. Um, I've just listed up some organizations here. Um, as I mentioned, Lupe and uh, NASW have, have also urged a no vote that are recommending voters vote now. Um, nosotros hemos hecho muchas investigaciones sobre esta pregunta y estamos promoviendo el no para la pregunta número tres 
porque eh, nosotros eh, pensamos que es una solución um, permanente para un problema que solo va a pasar una vez. O sea, esperemos que esta pandemia solo pase una vez. Lo que va a pasar es que nuestra comunidad es más diversa y si continuamos con este mismo mapa, no vamos a ser eh, representados eh, de una manera justa. Um, porque como mencionamos antes, la población asiática y la población latina ha crecido muchísimo en los últimos 10 años. Entonces es importante que nosotros seamos uh, representados de una manera justa. Okay, so I'm going to stop my share. Um, y todas estas organizaciones, I forgot to mention the, the, the list. Todas estas organizaciones están promoviendo el no, uh, porque ellos les interesa que las personas no sean eh, discriminadas, las personas de uh, afroamericanas, los latinos, los asiáticos. Ellos quieren um, que todo sea legal y justo para para esas poblaciones. Okay. Okay. Um, was there anything that, that you wanted to add, um, Jeff? Um, I think at this point, uh, we can take a couple of questions. Uh, thank you mm -hmm. so much for the, the presentation and the translation. Uh, I just want to put that link in the chat box and on the Facebook. Uh, it was a uh, fair, what was it from the slide? Fair districts? Fairdistrictsnj.org. FairDistricts.nj.org. No dot. Here, I'll throw in the so, so we had uh, a couple of questions. Uh, one was just looking for uh, clarification on the redistricting process and whether or not uh, this would be happening every 10 years, which I think we can answer in the context of a broader question that one of the viewers asked was just for a brief overview of how redistricting generally works, uh, just so they can understand the question a little better and how that process is usually carried out. Sure. So normally, um, the um, I'll start with the apportionment, pro the apportionment commission. New Jersey's apportionment commission is certified by December 1st of census years. So the folks that are going to draw these maps, it's gonna be five R's and five D's in New Jersey, um, will be certified by December 1st, 2020. Normally, um, we receive our census data earlier than other states, um, usually around the beginning of February, because we need to draw our maps in time for our June 2020 primary elections, which is actually an April deadline for candidate peti petitions. So we get the data and the redistricting, the apportionment commission has about two months to draw maps. They do that, they're in place ahead of the June 2021 um, elections and they're used in the 2021 general elections. Yvette, do you want to stop there? Yes. Do you want to stop um, El primero de diciembre del año del censo, cuando um, hay que recibir la información del censo, um, cinco republicanos y cinco demócratas eh, que son parte de esta um, junta que, que hacen el mapa, que crean el mapa eh, legislativo, eh, tienen que tener su mapa listo uh, dos meses antes de las elecciones primarias, que viene siendo el en abril, porque las primarias normalmente son en junio. Entonces, hasta abril ellos tienen um, que hacer su nuevo mapa. Okay. Okay. So this year, <clears throat> there is um, the Census Bureau it requested a, a delay in delivering the data as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the delay um, has gone back and forth in the courts. And while it's likely it will be delayed, we don't know by how much. So we don't actually know when we will receive the census data. If we receive the census data <clears throat> late 
but not too late, then as we did in 20, 2001, we can delay our primary elections. If we receive it too late to do that, then we need to come up with a different solution. This is the solution uh, that's been proposed. Um, All right, let me stop there, hold on. Okay. Dice que um, el, el censo este año por la pandemia eh, pidió más tiempo para presentar los datos del censo. Eh, si recibimos los datos tarde, pero no muy tarde, eh, pudiéramos cambiar eh, la fecha de, la, de las primarias. And then you said after, if you, if you receive the data not too late, you, you still have time to change the primaries, but if you receive it too late, you won't have time. So basically, yeah, if you receive it, let's say in June, it'd be very difficult to change the primary elections, but there's other options if you received it in, let's say, April or May. Si es que recibimos los datos del censo en junio, por ejemplo, ya sería muy tarde para cambiar las primarias, eh, pero si lo recibimos en abril, se pudiera hacer um, algo para acomodar eh, los datos que hayan eh, llegado un poquito tarde. However, if you do receive it too late to change the primaries, other legal options exist to help us deal with this delay. Hay otras opciones legales um, que se puede explorar si es que se reciba muy tarde para las uh, primarias, si reciben los datos muy tarde. <clears throat> so, in, in short, um, to the, the response about how redistricting works, a com bipartisan commission takes two months to draw New Jersey's legislative maps. And this proposal would still be a bipartisan commission, but they would be operating under a different timeline and the map would not be implemented um, until the 2023 elections. O sea, básicamente, si es que se demora mucho tiempo el, los datos del censo, eh, esta comisión que es uh, bipartidaria, o sea, tienen republicanos y el mismo número de demócratas, uh, no pudieran implementar sus mapas nuevos hasta el 2023, si es que llega muy tarde los datos. And I, I encourage people to visit um, fairdistrictsnj.org to learn about the redistricting process and other improvements that are needed to make the process more inclusive and transparent. There's very little public involvement in this process, regardless of this question um, passing or not. Hay un sitio de web uh, que se llama fairdistrictsnj.org. Will you be sending that link out? Yeah, it's in the chat. Spelling it out? Okay, so I don't have to spell it out. Um, en esa página eh, le dice por qué no sería buena idea de el votar el sí esta vez por la pregunta número tres. Did I get all the answer there, Jeff? I think so. There was a beginning part to that I think I missed. Yeah, I think the, the initial, the, the first question was just trying to clarify that the redistricting happens every 10 years and that yeah. if there's if there is if if we change the constitution to allow for the delay this time it would push it back years we have the potential to have it pushed back again in 10 years and then in 20 years because it's a permanent change not a temporary change yeah so i think this is important to say yeah so this would apply every time our data comes past February 15th. So you might have a, like an eight year map in place, followed by a 10 year map, followed by a 12 year map, followed by the, it, it will impact the redistricting cycle um, every time the data comes past February 15th, which happens, um, although I wouldn't say that it's it, it happens. It's just um, we, we can't predict uh, whether or not we, we get the data in a regular year before. Um, esto um, afectaría el cronograma legislativo de delimitación um, mucho porque en las veces que los datos llegan después del 15 de febrero, puede ser que estemos usando un mapa un de ocho años o otro mapa de diez años 
y la siguiente puede ser de más de, de 12 años o más. Quiere decir que los, los mapas serían uh, viejos y no re reflexionan la diversidad de la población. Si es que votan el sí. Yeah, and I think it's just important uh, to reiterate what Jesse said earlier, just that, uh, again, the current districts that we have are based on the 2010 census. And the demographics of New Jersey uh, have changed significantly in the last 10 years. And so mm -hmm. keep this current map in place for two more years uh, limits the political voice and the say uh, that communities have. And, and the way our demographics have changed in many communities is that we have become more diverse. Uh, mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that people have adequate representation and are adequately able to participate in the process. We don't want to be using data that, that is 10 years old for any longer than we have to. Estamos promoviendo el no para la pregunta número tres porque no representa la diversidad que hay ahora en las poblaciones latinas, asiáticas. Um, hay mucho más uh, latinos y asiáticos que en los, últimos, en los últimos diez años que han venido a New Jersey y por esa razón eh, queremos que seamos bien representados por nuestra legislación um, y que sea justo. Entonces, por ese motivo, estamos promoviendo la no. Thank you. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in. Was there anything else either of you wanted to add as we wrap up? Um, maybe, um, Jesse, if people are still worried about, like, if they registered and didn't receive their ballot, maybe tell them what they can do. Yeah, so as a reminder, yeah, that's that's great. You got, as a reminder, at this point, if you do not have your ballot um, and, or you need a replacement ballot, you spoiled your ballot, lost it, whatever happened, go in person. So now you, <clears throat> it is, it's really too late to uh, apply for ballots through the mail and have enough time for it to get to you in, through the mail. So you're going to go in person to your county clerk's office to get your, your vote by mail ballots um, right there. And if you'd like, you can vote it right there as well. Or remember, you can still vote at polling locations on election day using a paper provisional ballot. Um, so there are options if you, if you do not have a vote by mail ballot in your hand right now. But if you do have that vote by mail ballot, <laughs> please use it, cast it. You can <clears throat> cast yeah. it through the mail, secure ballot drop boxes, and person at your board of elections office, or you can bring it to your polling place on election day. Um, si usted no ha recibido su papeleta de votación por correo, um, puede ir en persona al condado de eh, la oficina de elecciones de, de su condado y ahí le dan un, un, una papeleta de votación y puede votar en ese momento o puede ir en persona, um, pero no todos los, los lugares eh, para votar van a estar abiertos. Entonces tiene que ir a ese website que puso Jeff ahí, vote.nj.gov, para ver dónde puede usted votar en persona el 3 de noviembre. Pero si usted tiene su papeleta de votación, mándelo pronto. Todavía está a tiempo. Puede ponerlo en los buzones que son para um, los boletos de votación en su ciudad. Casi todas las ciudades deberían tener por lo menos uno, si no es más. Go ahead, John. Yeah, so I, I added a link uh, into the chat and on the Facebook page. Uh, it's vote.nj.gov, where you can find all kinds of information and resources uh, about this election, including your polling locations. Uh, you can check to see if uh, you, if your ballot has been received, if you've already deposited your ballot, uh, either in the mail or in a drop box. You can track your ballot online with some very simple information to make sure that it's been received. Uh, and it's uh, the website has has all kinds of useful dates and information on it. So again, it's it's vote.nj.gov uh, if you need to access that. En ese sitio de web, eh, vote.nj.gov, también puede ver si es que usted ya mandó su papeleta de votación, puede ver eh, su, si es que ya han recibido su voto en eh, la sección donde dice track my ballot. Mete su información, crea un, um, 
una, una cuenta y usted puede seguir. Nadie más. Jesse, there's been some misinformation that I've gotten from families and friends saying that other people can see how you voted online. And I told them that's not true. Um, you can see if you're registered, right? If I have like my mom's first name, last name, but I cannot see how she voted. Um, and so I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, so you can uh, you can look up some basic voter information about somebody using their name and birth date, like if they're registered, if they're active. Um, but you need to create a uh, a login for the Track My Ballot portal using other information. In addition, it won't tell you. There's nothing that says how somebody voted. It'll say you know whether or not your vote by mail ballot was received on that portal, but it won't say your ballot's secret. You know, so they 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 don't. Nobody knows how you voted, but you, the county election officials, don't know how you voted. Uh, it's a secret ballot, so that information is not available to anybody. Uh -huh. Su votación, su, la manera que usted vota o por el candidato que usted vota es un secreto. Nadie puede ver esa información. Si yo entro a vote.nj.gov con los datos de mi mamá, por ejemplo, yo sé la fecha de nacimiento de ella, yo tengo el, el nombre de ella, lo único que voy a ver es si es que está registrada, pero no me va a decir por quién ella votó. Usted no puede, um, nadie puede ver por quién ustedes votaron. Por favor, no les dejen que, que nadie les diga que, que su información, que por quién votó, es público. Nadie puede ver esa información. Lo único que se ve es si es que usted está registrada. Well, thank you both so much for being here. Uh, this was a wonderful presentation, very informative. Uh, and again, it will be available on demand uh, along with the rest of our Road to November webinars. Uh, you can access it on the NASW New Jersey website. I've shared that information in the chat here and on the Facebook uh, link as well. It's naswnj.org backslash advocacy backslash road hyphen to hyphen November. You can see all of our archive videos there. You can also find them on the NASW New Jersey YouTube page. If you go to YouTube and search NASW New Jersey, uh, we will be sharing uh, some of the videos again over the next week. This is our last live presentation for Road to November, uh, seven days out from Election Day now. Uh, we will be resharing some videos. Uh, thank you, Jesse, for being a wonderful partner. I think this is the third webinar you've done with us uh, in this series. And uh, we will definitely be resharing the webinar we did last week about uh, safeguarding your vote and what to watch for. Uh, as far as if there's any voter intimidation going on at polls. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, been a really informative series and I'm glad that you've all been here with us. Uh, so thank you all so much. And uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jesse, for always including the Latino community in everything that you do. Uh, muchas gracias. Ellos siempre nos incluyen a la comunidad latina y queremos agradecerles. Next time, maybe you two can do it in Spanish. <laughs> Good try. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.